Welcome back. I'm Josh. He's Paul. We're taking your questions. 412-575-2600. We, we went to break talking about a particular topic. I want to pick this back up because, Paul, I know you wrote a column about this particular subject, talking about what the Pirates should do at the trade deadline and what we should expect. I, I talked about how the timing is an issue because you want to have guys that have at least high trade value because you don't want to repeat the same mistakes that they've yeah. made trading off guys in the past. One to get your thoughts, and I know the, the caller asked about trading Marte and pretty much what you do in that scenario, but there's other guys whose names have been brought up too. Your, your thoughts on trying to find the right time to do it and finding the right trade partner because that's a, that's a big factor also. Well, especially like a guy like Marte, you know, you have to find a team maybe like the Phillies, you know, who lost their center fielder, obviously, or actually he's their right fielder, but lost an outfielder who they were counting on who was actually in the midst of having a pretty good season right. um, and are desperate and looking for somebody to fill that role. That's when you can get, you know, real value in the, in the middle of the season for a guy like Marte. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what – there's not much value for Cabrera. There's not going to be much value for a Corey Dickerson. If I, I mean, get one guy back in you know, the they're, and, and, and they're rental guys. Right. For, you know, they're rental guys. On expiring are, contracts. You know, uh, probably looked at as, as bench guys for the, for the most part. I, I mean, I don't know that those are guys that people are going to look at and say, oh, that's the difference between us winning and losing. But, you know, if we can get a Cabrera to have as a pinch hitter down the stretch, that'd yeah. be a nice thing. But we're not going to overpay for him or whatever. A capable corner out there I mean, who might be a fourth guy or DH know, for an AL team. The elephant room in the room is that their best trade piece and their best – you want to get a, a good haul in return is Vasquez. And that's what they've got to determine. Are they close enough that they think next year that they are going to really make a run – and if they are, you don't trade Vasquez because, you know, you've got him under contract for a couple more years with a good. Years. But if you feel, Very cheap, by the way. But if you feel like, well, you know what, we're going to have to take a step back before we take a step forward. So it's probably going to be, you know, maybe two years. Like next year, we're going to rebuild a little bit. And, you know, then you trade them now. Absolutely. I mean, you mean to tell me a, a contender that needs bullpen help? Back end of the bullpen help. Oh, yeah. I mean, a left ender at that, one of the better lefties. More, in the bullpen and I'll tell you the other thing is, you know, you find a team that already has a closer <clears throat> that needs an Andrew Miller type. Could you imagine being able to bring Vasquez in in the fifth or the sixth against, you know, oh, this team, we're getting ready to, you know, they've got three lefties in a row. And, and let's be honest, it's not like they've used them a lot. That's what I mean. You know, that's There's the that. point. Yeah. That's the point. But you yeah, understand what fair. I'm saying? They, I think that's the, that's the decision you have to make. Like, if you get a good offer for Marte, you can do it because you got Reynolds, you know, and, and you got the Martin kid down there and right. whatever. My point is, Vasquez is the one you really have to make a decision on. And, and that becomes, what do we realistically think we're going to be next year? To your point about Vasquez and any other pitching for that matter, Nathan on Twitter says, if the Pirates had decent pitching right now or even their April pitching, they'd be a winning team for, for sure. And I'll say this much, you know who they had in April? They had Jamison Tyone, they had Trevor Williams, they had Jordan Lyles. They had them all healthy, and they were their three most consistent starters. I, I think the problems that they've had in these past few weeks are because of the fact they haven't had their most consistent starters. Well, those yeah, obviously losing those guys. I mean, Tyon and Williams. Uh, my issue, though, is, I mean, you, you really have been without Kella in the bullpen. And no Kella in the bullpen. And, but, 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 the but, but you've, you're point. missing one guy in the bullpen, and your bullpen is a dumpster fire. I, I mean, where, yeah. they keep bringing all these guys in. It's like, wait a minute. Where are the, you know, like like my man tomorrow. I hope I hope he does a great job tomorrow. But yeah. we're basically, I mean, it's almost, and I wrote this in a column, it's almost like they're throwing darts uh, you know, I mean, trying to, at a board with people's names on it saying, okay, let's see if this guy can work. Yeah, and it, this, the sad part about it is even if you mentioned, like you mentioned, if the starters are healthy, the bullpen hasn't really been able to hold it. We saw that early in the season the first couple of weeks. The bullpen didn't hold leads. But then in the, even the past couple of weeks, even when the starters pitched well to keep you in it, the bullpen still let things get away from you. So it was still an issue when it came back around to it. Got to take another break. We'll wrap up when we come back. Stick around.